Thank you for stopping by Ballistic Barbecue. On this video, I will be preparing spatchcock chicken on the Primo Oval XL. Let's get going. All right, first of all, what does spatchcock mean? There are plenty of theories out there of the origins of this word. The one that I personally buy into is it's an abbreviation of dispatch the bird. Spatch being an old English term for quickly, and of course, cock being the bird. It, essentially what we're doing is butterflying this chicken and it's a technique that's being used on you know game birds, duck, turkey, and of course chicken. So let's get to spatchcocking this bird. What I've done is flipped it over and I'm going to cut the spine out. I'm going to cut along both sides of the spine. Okay, once the spine is removed, now we want to get this bird to lay flat. Now the most common thing to do is to press down right on the two sides of the breast to get it to flatten out. I don't like to do that. I'll show you what I like to do. Now in this notch between the two breasts, you'll see a white piece of cartilage. I like to simply make an incision right there. And then what I'll do is push down. And as you can see, the cartilage is cut. I've now exposed the back end of the keel bone. So what I'll do is take my finger and just sort of run it along there and pop it out. Then we'll grab this and just pop it completely out, including the little cartilage piece there. And then as you can see, it lays perfectly flat. From this point, if we wanted to have this bird, all we'd have to do is make just a simple incision and there'll be nothing interfering with your knife blade. All right, one of the wonderful benefits of cooking on a ceramic cooker like the Primo Oval XL is once you shut that lid, it creates an environment that really locks in moisture. So whatever you're cooking, chicken, fish, beef, whatever, it's gonna really seal in those juices. Now, if you're a big fan of crispy chicken skin like I am, there's a couple things to consider. Chickens are usually, you know, packaged in like a cryovac or they're, you know, on those styrofoam plates with the plastic over them tightly. And it's really pumping a lot of the juices and moisture into that skin. So you have a couple ways of overcoming rubbery skin on the Primo Oval XL. One is to simply raise the cooking temperature, you know, up into the 400s. I personally like to cook in the 300s, you know, 350 to 375. So my normal routine would be spatchcocking the bird, cleaning it off, patting it dry, then putting it in the fridge overnight, cooking into the next day. Now videotaping wasn't on the schedule last night, so I put the bird whole in my fridge, uncovered last night. So it's you know, nice and dry on the skin. What I will do, however, is just you know, clean up the nodes and everything, rinse it a little bit, and pat it dry on the other side. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that, and then we'll get to seasoning this bird. All right, so I cleaned up and I rinsed that underside. What was the cavity of this bird? patted it dry, and again, like I said, I'd already cleaned and patted dry and allowed the skin side to kind of dry out a bit in my fridge. Next thing we're going to do is coat this with a little light coating of canola oil. You're asking yourself, well, you just told us that you wanted it to be kind of dry. Why are you doing this, Greg? Well, the reason is when water is evaporating, it kind of creates a steam, and that's what's going to kind of make the skin rubbery. Oil actually will help crisp up the skin. Oil does not evaporate. It's just going to start kind of bubbling away and helping get us a nice crispy skin here. All right, nice and coated with oil. Now it's time to season this bird. And I am going to be using Primo's Tupelo Honey Crunch. And this stuff is awesome. It's got dried crystallized honey in it. It's got some ancho chili, a little cayenne. It's got, get this, dried pork stock in here. And let me tell you, this kind of hits all the notes. I mean, it's got that savory, it's got sweet, it's got a little heat, dare I say umami. But anyway, this stuff's awesome and it's one of their new spices that they have in a line of spices now. Um, you can buy it at any of the dealers that carry the Primo, so check out Primo.com and you'll find the store locator there. Anyway, let's go ahead and apply the seasoning and I'm just gonna go ahead and dust it on and I'm going to do the top and the bottom. All 
All right, seasoned and ready to go. Now, normally what I would do is actually bend the wings back so they're actually on the bottom of the bird. But as you can see, the wing tips have been cut off. Now, this is actually one of my favorite brands of chickens here. It's locally raised. And I don't know why they do it, but they cut the wing tips off. And I kind of like snacking on those little wing tips. But anyway, we're going to allow this to kind of start you know, sweating through the rub a little bit. In the meantime, I'm going to take you guys out to the backyard and show you how we're setting up the Primo for the cook. All right, as you can see, I have the firebox divider in the firebox of the Primo. I have the left side of the firebox full of lump, and I have zero lump charcoal on the right side. We are setting this cooker up for a two-zone cook today. Now, about seven or eight minutes ago, I lit it right here in the center, and we are ready to start dialing in the temp on this bad boy. Right now I have the lower damper fully open. I want a bunch of oxygen to get in there and get that fire going. I'm going to go ahead and set the grill grates on. Now I'm going to put the grates on in the upper position. And we are going to close the lid on the Primo. I'm going to fully open the upper damper and I'm going to just watch my temperature control. Again, I'm looking to cook at about 350 to 375, and I'm gonna stop this shy about 300 degrees, and then we're gonna start slowly and incrementally dialing in this temperature. All right, we're at 300 degrees now, so I'm going to close this top damper to where it's about a quarter of the way open. I'm gonna close the bottom damper to where it's about one and a half to two inches. Okay, again, what we're doing is incrementally coming up to my target temperature of 350 to 375. We're saturating the ceramic, and I just do not want to go past that 375 mark. It's a lot easier to bring the temperature up than to bring it down once you've passed your target temp. So I want it to stop short of 350. All right, it's been a good 10 minutes. We are stopped at about 349, 348, 349. That needle is not moving, and I'm pretty happy with that. So again, I have the main upper damper opened about a quarter of the way. What I'm going to do now is start fine tuning it. I'm going to open the daisy wheel fully open. So again, I'm shooting for that area between 350 and 375, so I'm totally cool with it going past 350. I'm just going to keep my eye on it, watch this needle rise. I do not want it to go past 375. All right, we are at 360 now. I'm totally content with that. I have left the top damper with the daisy ring right where it's at. Now, a couple things are going to happen when I open the lid. There's going to be a flush of oxygen. It's going to kind of charge that charcoal up. But I'm also going to lose a lot of heat. So once I get the bird on, get the lid closed, I'm going to stand by monitor it a little bit, let it restabilize. I may have to do some minor adjustments. But I'm pretty happy with where we're at right now. So let's get the bird on. All right. So again, we're cooking on the side with no charcoal. And I want to keep the breasts away from the side of the cooker that does have the charcoal on it. I'm going to go ahead and shut the lid. All right, you may have noticed that I do not have a heat deflector or the heat deflectors in place on this cook. And I certainly could have and ended up with a really, really good bird. Now, the way I'm doing this is I'm allowing that hot heat to come from the left side. And it's going to kind of convect around that chicken. It's going to give it like a bath in this nice radiant heat, kind of like a spatchcock jacuzzi. We're going to end up with a really moist bird with a very, very nice crispy skin. It's going to be insane. Now, you may be asking, okay, well, what's the cooking times? I kind of use 15 minutes per pound as a guideline. It's just a guideline. There are a lot of variables that are going to determine when this chicken's cooked. Really, the only way to tell is with a good thermometer. You need to have a good thermometer. It's the safe way to cook a chicken. I'm going for 165 degrees doneness at the breast. Now, I'll be pulling this bird at 163 degrees, and I'm allowing that carryover to bring it up to 165. But seriously, guys, you need a good thermometer. There's really nothing worse than an overdone chicken, but even worse is an underdone chicken. Very, very dangerous. So, I'll be seeing you when this chicken's done. All right, we are at one hour, five minutes. I just hit that target temperature. Check this thing out. I mean, this is stunning, and I have to tell you, it smells incredible. 
So I'm going to go ahead and pull this bird off the cooker. I'll take it in the kitchen. I'm going to let it rest about 10 minutes or so. Then we're going to try it out. So I will meet you inside the kitchen. All right, here we are. It smells incredible. And I cannot wait to give this a try. And let me show you something that's really cool about the way I spatchcocked it by removing that keel bone is when it comes to breaking this down into portions. You don't have anything interfering with you. Just Gosh, look at that. Look at those juices. Look at that. Mm. Really nice. And we have crispy skin. That rub, again, it's just, you get that nice sweet honey and you get that little bit of a burn from the, from the peppers. But then there's also that, those savory notes. Just, wow, just look at that though. Couldn't ask for any better chicken than this right here. Anyway, guys, thanks for stopping by. I appreciate it. Do me a favor. Check out the Primo Ceramic Grill channel. There are some exclusive videos that I've done for them that aren't on my Ballistic Barbecue channel. And they also have a series called Primo University where they've produced some pretty cool tutorial videos on the various functions of the Primo. Very, very handy. Till my next video. Cheers.